The number one thing you need to know about bodily pain is that it is a creation of the brain. And it's created in the same neural brain networks uh, that are responsible for emotion, but also for homeostatic and allostatic uh, regulation. So I'm going to be quoting from a paper called Evidence for Large-Scale Brain Systems Supporting Allostasis and Interoception in Humans. So what is allostasis? Well, from the paper, allostasis is not a condition or state of the body. It is the process by which the brain efficiently maintains energy regulation in the body. Allostasis is defined in terms of prediction, and recent theories propose that the prediction of interoceptive signals, what you're feeling from your body, is necessary for successful allostasis. So in the discussion, it says, the integrated allostatic interoceptive brain system is a complex cortical and subcortical system consisting of connected intrinsic networks. Our work demonstrates a single brain system that supports not just allostasis, the prediction of energy needs, uh, but a, also a wide range of psychological phenomena, emotions, memory, decision-making, and pain that can all be explained by the reliance on allostasis. So allostasis is the prediction of energy needs. Uh, homeostasis is going to be the physiologic processes that occur through the autonomic nervous system to keep this body functioning normally. Additionally, the regions controlling and mapping uh, inner body physiology, so your interoceptive sense, the feeling from inside your body, lie in networks that are also in charge of social affiliation, pain, judgments, empathy, reward, addiction, memory, stress, craving, decision-making. This is like Buddhism 101. That's why being excluded feeling alienated is physically painful because of the brain that's a threat to your well-being because if you're excluded from the in-group for primates for for apes great book like i always talk about uh why zebras don't get ulcers the most stressful thing possible for a for an ape at least the type of apes that this guy was apes that this guy was studying is social exclusion when they are when their social status uh declines their body is filled with stress hormones. So all of these things are helping to regulate your body and you could feel pain and pain could simply be just another symptom of, uh, of disrupted homeostasis. Because remember, we're talking about pain where there is no soft tissue damage. There is no injury. You go to the doctor, they're like, oh, we don't see anything, do some physical therapy. But why? What is physical therapy gonna do? It has, the pain that you're experiencing may have nothing, absolutely zero zilch to do with anything about muscular strength or even your ability to move. Now you might say, but uh, Neil, isn't posture restoration physical therapy? Uh, no. Uh, in fact, anyone who does posture restoration for any length of time starts to realize this is the furthest thing from physical therapy. It has nothing to do with stretching, strengthening, or any of that stuff. This is all about autonomic nervous system regulation. Now, if someone is in a constant state of threat, constant state of fight or flight, what happens? Well, they get stuck over on the right side. Their pelvis will come forward, will orient to the right. Now they're over there. The right side of their rib cage compresses, their neck gets tight on the right side, and they stay there and they breathe. They don't know they're there, but they're there. That's when people lie down. The testing shows that that's where they are. Now that is autonomic nervous system regulation or dysregulation right there because they're only using half of their body. So posture restoration, when we're trying to get someone off of their right side and onto their left side so they can stabilize over on their left side, turn their lumbar spine and body to, to lateralize over to the left and stabilize there so that they can use the left diaphragm to take a breath in and not use their neck or their lower back to do so. That is autonomic nervous system regulation 101 because that is the primary uh, goal of life. Well, if you can't breathe, they're going to die pretty quickly. So without breathing, your heart's not going to do much for you. So the point being, post restoration is not physical therapy in the way that most people conceive of it. It's not even remotely, and again, it's not even remotely close to physical therapy in, in my way of thinking. Uh, anything physical can be physical therapy. Dance, dancing is probably the best physical therapy you can possibly do for the brain. The following is taken from the book, How Do You Feel by uh, A.D. Bud Craig, an interoceptive moment with your neurobiological self. And he is a neuroanatomist. Uh, Probably one of the, if there's famous neuroanatomists out there, he would be it. So what he says is that, first of all, muscle and joint pain. 
it's got to be autonomic nervous system because these fibers, these small, dia small diameter fibers, are not going to the primary uh, somatosensory cortex. They're going to the interoceptive cortex, the insula. Uh, this is the homeostatic centers. So he says nearly half of the small diameter sensory fibers for muscle signal workload or energy use. Remember, energy use is homeostasis, allostasis. Allostasis is predicting how to use your energy or how you're going to need the energy uh, in the future. Changes in the mechanical, thermal, and chemical status of the tissues of the body, obviously including muscles and joints. Stimuli that can cause painful feelings in humans are important, first of all, for the homeostatic maintenance of the body. So let's just say you have uh, a rough time in life and you're over on your right side. You're stuck in this left AIC, right DC, right TMCC pattern. Your pelvis stays to the right. Maybe your rib cage is kind of always, your left shoulder is higher. See, look all around at how many left shoulders you see higher than the right, meaning they're over on the right side. This right rib cage is compressed. The, the, the soft tissue of this rib cage on the right is constantly in a compressed state, while on the left side is constantly in a elongated state. And it doesn't switch because you can't get to your left side. Yeah you might have some changes in the mechanical, thermal, and chemical status of those tissues, not for the better. That muscle or that joint might be reporting back through sensory fibers, small diameter sensory fibers, part of the autonomic nervous system, to the, uh, air, the interoceptive areas of the brain that then regulate homeostasis or an allostasis, uh, that something's wrong. And yeah, you might get pain, but it's still autonomic. So you have to regulate the autonomic nervous system first through breathing, get the, left, get the neck out of the way, and get the left diaphragm back into your life so that you can become more autonomically, autonomically balanced. And then at that point, you can start you know, moving more. You can start doing other uh, PRI techniques that are designed to get you into more difficult uh, positions, upright positions. But you have to reduce neck breathing. You have to reduce lower back breathing. You have to get them breathing with their di left diaphragm. That's the first thing that you do uh, before you really start to do anything else. So how do Posture Restoration Institute techniques uh, work in this situation? Because again, most people think that they're exercises. They are not exercises. They are techniques, neurosensory techniques to allow you to regulate your autonomic nervous system. They're not exercises. Gym exercises don't care. They're not designed. They're not even thinking about autonomic nervous system uh, regulation. But that's what posture restoration is all about. Now, we are using with, somatic, with this little diagram here, just look at somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. They, have, they, they talk to each other. They completely talk to each other. So we are using intentional movement, PRI techniques and sensory references, left heel, arch of the right foot. Those are those are proprioceptive inputs. Those are sensory inputs for the brain to understand where it is in space so that you, as a human, as a right dominant human, can bring your pelvis over to the left, rotate your spine, lumbar spine, over to the left so you can get your body over to the left to your non-dominant side, stabilize it, and take a breath. That is autonomic nervous system regulation. Uh, that is homeostatic. That is allostasis. That is breathing and that is cranial nerves, because that's the vagus. So when people have jaw issues, teeth issues, vision issues, that's why they can't, they don't benefit from these PRI techniques because they, if it's just a breathing issue, these techniques work beautifully because we're positioning you to breathe properly. But if someone has a cranial issue like I did, that's the story of my life, that's why my YouTube channel exists, because of my jaw, my teeth, and my vision. Craniums stop this process from occurring. Craniums, issues prevent you from re-regulating your autonomic nervous system because those cranial nerves go right into the vagus system, the ventral vagus system. So you can't overcome that. So you can't regulate your breathing because you stay in the state of extension. So you can't do these techniques. You can do them. It's just not going to get, you're not going to have maximum effectiveness. Uh, so that's what I'm really always trying to get across. But as long as it's just, if, if your autonomic nervous system is, issue is just breathing because you neck breathe too much and you lost your left side, you're stuck. That's easy. Oh my God. It, anyone, who's credentialed and actually knows what they're doing can help you with that. You can't really do it by yourself, I'm sorry. It's gonna be really, really difficult. Uh, and you can't do it online in a program. You, you have to be treated by somebody who knows what they're doing. It could be done online, but they better, 
man, they better know what they're doing. Let's just put it that way. Half my questionnaire, if I do anything online, half that questionnaire is about cranium, vision, jaw, teeth, because that's what's going to hold people back and hypermobility, but I'm not going to get too much into that. So that's how the process works. And it works wonderfully well to re-regulate autonomic nervous system activity with the primary influence being breathing, breathing with the left diaphragm. And that will then help regulate, re-regulate homeostasis and allostatic predictive activity. And at that point, yeah, pain will usually diminish.